Just some reminders, Minnesota will be up on the dais first. Gophers winning their third game in the last four outings, improved their record to 22-13, and 13, while advancing to the second round of the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2013. Minnesota made 11 three-point baskets in the game, including six in the first half, surpassing its previous high of five in its last four games. This is the fourth time this season the Gophers have made 10 or more trays in a game. Gabe Kalsher scored 24 points, including 16 in the second half, while grabbing a career-high eight rebounds. He hit five uh, three-point baskets. Jordan Murphy and Amir Coffey added 18 points apiece. Jordan Wara led uh, Louisville with his ninth double-double this season, 10 points, 11 rebounds. Satellite, satellite coordinates for this press conference is today. Galaxy 17 slash 18K slot B. Downlink is 12055.5 vertical. 12055.5 vertical. Minnesota shot 50% from the field, 29 of 58. 
11 of 27 from three-point range, 17 of 26 free throws. Gabe Kalsher with 24 points. Amir Coffey, Jordan Murphy with 18 apiece. Dupre McRae and Daniel Allura with 13 apiece. Louisville shot 44.1%, 26 of 59. 9 of 26 from three-point range, 15 of 17 free throws. They were led by Christian Cunningham with 22 points. He had a career high of 13 out of 13 from the free throw line. Darius Perry with 12. Stephen Enoch with 14. Jordan Wara with 10 points, 11 rebounds. Again, this will be uh, the Golden Gophers' uh, first appearance in the second round of the NCAA tournament since 2013. Glad to welcome at the dais the victorious uh, Golden Gophers. This time we're having an opening uh, statement from head coach Richard Patino. Then we'll take questions from the student athletes and come back to coach. Congratulations, coach. Well, a great win for our guys. Um, I just thought we 
played really good defense when we needed to. Uh, we showed great toughness and grit down the stretch. Um, obviously, they were really pressuring us and, and sending us to the free throw line. We hit some big free throws. Um, but that's, I mean, you can't, you can't undersell it. That's a terrific win for our guys. Louisville's a really good team, a very well-coached team. Chris does a great job. That staff does a great job. So um, being proud is probably a bit of an understatement uh, for these guys. That's a special win. This time we'll open up questions for student athletes. Please raise your hand and we have a microphone on the left side aisle. Uh, Gabe, you played almost the whole game. Jordan, you had a little bit of a break, but um, I know you guys are used to that by now with all the injuries, but you feel like you're ready to go in a couple days uh, for, for another game? Uh, yeah, yes, for sure. Uh, we just got to come. I'll be ready for Saturday. So, yeah, we're ready. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to be ready to go, 100%. There's no way I'm missing it, so. It'll be fine. <laughs> On the front and left side, this is a 12-minute session, folks. Uh, for both players, if you don't mind, it seemed like neither team was having, tr having much luck scoring early, but then all of a sudden it looked like you were getting everything you wanted. Did you figure something out? Uh, what happened at that point? We'll start with Jordan first. Um, I'm, I just think that was, we were able to get stops, and that's what gave us a lot of confidence going down the stretch. I think that uh, once Gabe saw that the ball went through the hoop for him and Amir and Dupree, I think that's when everyone else started getting confidence, and that's when our offense really started to flow. Yeah, I just feel like we just eased into it um, after like the first five minutes, and then we just got to uh, start to get confident at, at the end in the middle of the game. We had a question on the right side. Okay, let's go to the left side on the aisle, please. Jordan, can you walk us through uh, the injury and what you were dealing with? Uh, uh, I think it happened like early in the second half. I just my back just locked up on me. Uh, I mean, it, I mean, I don't know what else I can do about it. But I mean, for now, uh, just get treatment, and just take care of it. It just happened down the stretch, and just had to keep playing through it. Stay on the left side on the aisle. Gabe, y'all make not even six threes a game, and you guys cashed in 11. Can you talk about what you saw from the Louisville defense today? Um, I feel like they were just um, giving, it, giving it to us at the end, um, in the middle of the game. But uh, I feel like we just got confidence um, during the game as well. Um, I feel like Dupree, once he hit his, everyone started getting confidence, and we just fed off each other. Oh, yeah, he was, he was hitting too. <laughs> <laughs> On the right side of the aisle, back and forth there. Yeah. Gabe, that, that first three, was that the key? I mean, you, you, seem, you didn't seem to shoot a lot early, early on, and then you make that one, and it just flowed from there. Was that first one the confidence booster? Uh, yeah, for sure. Once that first one hit, um, I just felt, felt, felt confidence. Uh, the first two were a little short in and out, but after that, I just kept feeling confident. Stay on the right side on the aisle. Uh, this is for Jordan. Jordan, early on especially, Louisville seemed to uh, aggressively collapse on you and Daniel. How much fun was it watching Gabe and Amir and the guys take advantage of that? Oh, man, I love when they just take advantage of the, the collapsing defense and when they're all puddled in the paint and, and focusing on me. That makes it my job a lot easier just to find them on, find them open. And Gabe was, I found Gabe open in the corner a couple times, made some good moves and got some good jump shots. So it was really, it was really fun just being able to see that and, and uh, seeing them hitting shots and having their confidence and smiling a little bit and having fun. Left side aisle. Jordan, with the amount that Louisville shot threes, was there a sense going into this game that you guys were going to need to to really shoot a, a decent amount yourselves to to keep pace almost? And because you got involved as well, um, I don't think there's a, nece uh, a necessary like sense of urgency to shoot threes. I think there was overall just we needed to score the ball, put the ball in the hoop, and and stop them as well. I mean, they definitely didn't shoot it that well from the three today. So uh, credit to our guys for playing defense, and uh, credit to our guys for also hitting shots. For both players, again, I know nobody wanted to play into the Louisville matchup before the game, but now that it's over, are you, are you happy you won it for Richard? You can go first. Jordan. Um, like, like I said earlier, uh, or a couple, like two days ago, um, this wasn't really about uh, getting a win for Coach P. It was about getting a win for our, t for our team in general and just um, making sure we advance to the next round. And, and I think that was what makes him happy. And that's what makes our teammates happy. Yeah, what he said. It wasn't really about Patino. It was just about us advancing um, to the next uh, round. On the right side, Al. Yeah, guys, there, there, there have been games where you, you have uh, definitely struggled shooting-wise. Uh, what changed today? Because, I mean, you guys got hot, and you weren't just good. You were great at, at times. 
What changed from the games where you do struggle to a day like today where there's times you can't miss? Jordan? Um, I think it's just all confidence, honestly. I think it's our mentality, and I think that um, once we, we have the right mindset going in the games and we're confident and locked in, I think there's uh, very few teams that can stop us, and so we saw that today. Yeah, it's just confidence um, and just forgetting about that, that one that you missed and just going on, so confidence is a big key. Backside left aisle, then we'll go over the uh, – over here, we've got two, a couple more questions left before we go to Coach. Uh, for Gabe, how, how confident were you by the time the fourth, I think, three went down? You, like, backpedaled and were, like, strumming uh, like a guitar or something like that. Have you done something like that before, or is, is that a regular thing, or did um, it just come, like, come out of your body as you were getting no, happy? I, I haven't uh, strummed a guitar, but I've seen it. So. Did you do that? Yeah. Did you really do that? <laughs> oh, whoa. Come on. Act like you've been there before. I've seen the arrow. I've seen the arrow before. The arrow, the arrow was dope. Do whatever he wants if he hits five threes. You strummed up the band? Oh, what? <laughs> Gabe, just kind of branching off that, you, you haven't been in this situation before. It's your first NCAA tournament. Did this feel any different to you than other big games this season? And, and how did you sort of feed off that? Um, I mean, it's when we were in a big um, atmosphere and it's a big stage. But, I mean, we've been here, um, Big Ten tournament. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just, just eased into it. Um, it's another big game, so it felt good. Final question here on the left aisle for the student athletes. How would you guys sum up the significance of this one, given the fact that it's the first win in the NCAA tournament for the program since 2013? Jordan first. Um, obviously, it means a lot to us, and it means a lot to our state and our fans and our program as well. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's really significant to us. Obviously, we've been in this position uh, two years ago where we lost, and now just being able to redeem that loss and win and keep moving and advancing. And, uh, and going into the next game with a good mindset, I think that it's a pretty positive thing. Yeah, it's very big for us and our community and our fans. So it's just big that we're um, advancing and moving on. Okay, we're going to dismiss the student athletes. The Minnesota locker room is open for another 20 minutes. At this time, we we'll take questions for Coach. <clears throat> Left side aisle. Uh, Coach, obviously you're, you got to be proud of the shooting performance, but how proud are you of the defensive performance as well? Yeah, I thought the defense was great. Um, you know, Jordan Noir, I thought we did a really good job on him. That's a tough offensive team. They run a lot of good stuff. They put you in binds. And I thought where we started to build those leads was we got stops. We got a little tired at the end, um, but for the most part, when we needed to, we got stops. Right side aisle, Coach. Coach, Jordan's game is so consistent. I feel like to a degree you know what you're going to get out of him. But one of the keys to your team, I feel, is if Amir is really on his game, you guys are tough to beat. How early did you get a sense that he was really feeling it today? I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> uh, Jordan's very consistent, but when Amir is on his game, I feel like you guys are really tough yeah. to beat. How early did you get a sense that he was really feeling it today? He's been pretty, Amir's been pretty locked in over the last month. Um, you know, when he's, he, he, when he's good and understanding where his shots are coming from, he's terrific. He's playing 40 minutes a game. He's very, very durable. He's playing great defense. He played really good defense on Wara. Um, you know, so he, he was locked in early. You could tell. If you're not locked in now, there's probably a problem. Left side. Coaches, they, they came into the game with a significant advantage as far as three-point shooting, and you guys really beat them at that game. Was that an emphasis, or did that just happen? I think it just happened. I, you know, it, it wasn't anything that we necessarily saw. Um, it's just a confidence builder. I mean, obviously, Gabe's a great shooter. Um, you know, Murph chipping in with two. That's a welcome addition. Um, you know, but we just stick with our flow offensively of what we're doing. I mean, I don't think it was anything necessarily that they did. I just thought we were confident. We hit open shots. Stay on the left side aisle. What was your reaction to the, the crowd, and how did you feel like that helped you guys? The crowd was awesome. Uh, the crowd was absolutely awesome. I, you know, when I meet people, I try to explain to them about Minnesota and how much pride our fans have, not just for men's basketball, but for the university. I remember when I first took the job, everybody saying, oh, you work at the U. I'm like, the U? I just left Miami. Uh, but that's the way they are there. It's special to them um, all across the board. And, um, you know, that crowd really carried us. That was, that was a big time uh, performance for them. We appreciate it. And hopefully we see them uh, in a couple of days as well. Other questions? We still have about four minutes left. We're going to go on the uh, left side aisle, then we'll come to the right side. Gabe's game, um, as I said before, it looked like he didn't want to shoot that much early on, and then he makes that first shot, and, and it just sort of uh, steamrolled from there. Yeah, and he drove the ball a couple times in crucial moments, got that and one, uh, knocked down some crucial free throws. 
he had eight rebounds. Gabe had eight rebounds. That's remarkable. Um, and then obviously he's a terrific three-point shooter. He's got a beautiful stroke. Uh, you know, he, he's one of those guys. He deserves success every single day. It does not matter what you do. That guy's punching the clock. You could even tell him, like, Gabe, take today off. He, he's going to sneak in the gym. He's, one, he's a throwback uh, with that, so he deserves success. On the aisle there. It seems like you guys did a really good job of hedging screens today and handling the ball screen action. Do you think that played a big role in the team defensive success? That's important. You know, teams run a lot of ball screens, um, and they've got five talented guys on the court who put you in binds and can shoot the ball well. So I thought from a scouting report standpoint, the guys were really locked in did a very good job there. Two minutes left in this session, back left side aisle. With about three minutes left, there was a three-minute review on the shot clock situation. I know I saw you were, you, you, you were kind of asking, okay, wrap this up, wrap this up. With you guys in the point of advantage, uh, I guess, were you, how were you trying to make sure that the guys stayed focused and, and locked in with that long of a stoppage at that point in the game? You know, just, just stay poised. You know, that happens. We're, we're used to that. Those, those reviews can happen from time to time. Just stay composed and just think about the next play. Give them kind of what we're going to do, if it's their ball, our ball, et cetera. Left side aisle. When you consider Murphy's durability over his four-year career, is there any doubt in your mind that he's going to be good to go for Saturday? Absolutely no doubt in my mind. He'll find a way even if we tell him he can't. Second row. I know you don't want to talk about Louisville, but are you at least going to like get a nice gift out of this from your father or something? Or are there, are, are there any emotions you want to speak to? You know, I'm, I'm truthful with it. Uh, I really am not being diplomatic. It really wasn't about that. Um, it's very, very hard to get to the tournament, especially in our league. Um, we had some five new players. We had some ups and downs. The focus was on preparing. It didn't matter who we played, um, you know, and so I'm proud of our players. I'm proud of our um, university that they can, you know, be a part of this, our community, to come drive over to Des Moines. Um, so, no, it, it really is not anything extra. Um, that's just always been my mentality. I, I try not to get too high. I try not to get too low. Um, it really, it, like I said, I was not being diplomatic. I got respect for Chris Mack, his staff. They do a really good job. And that was my focus was how can we find a way to beat them? How can I help this team find a way to beat a really good team? Final question. Congratulations, right. Coach. We'll Thank see you, you tomorrow. Minnesota interview session tomorrow. tomorrow. Student athletes at uh, 135. Tomorrow. And the head coach at 155. We'll have Louisville up here shortly. This time we have Louisville Cardinals. We'll take an opening statement from Coach Mack, and then we're availability for student athletes before we dismiss them. Well, hats off to Minnesota. I thought they were uh, uh, the better team. You know, the, the last couple of minutes in the first half and the first couple of minutes in the second half, um, they, they delivered quite a punch. Goes from a one or two point game to, to 10 very, very quickly. And, um, we were playing uphill from there. You know, it's really a, uh, a tough feeling, you know, to end your season so quickly in the NCAA tournament. Um, I am very proud of our group. Um, I think they exceed a lot of people's expectations. It's sort of hard to see that in the moment. But, um, you know, to get a group that was picked 11th preseason uh, in our conference and, and to represent our conference in the NCAA tournament, I don't take that lightly. I thought our guys, especially our, our three graduate transfers, did a tremendous job of showing leadership and being everyday guys and, and bringing some excitement back to uh, Louisville basketball. But as I said before, Minnesota was the better team, and uh, hats off to those guys.
this time to take questions for our student athletes, please raise your hand or have a microphone. Okay, left side aisle. Quan, this is a team that doesn't make a lot of three pointers. What was the scouting report? What was the defensive game plan going in against the guys like Gabe and, and them? Um, you know, just keeping a tight floor. You know, helping helping each other out. You know, once they try to get in the paint, um, you know, they they knocked a couple threes down. You know, we was living with it, but you know, we started to kind of press up, and you know, they just kept making shots. So that's just what happens. Any other questions? We got a question here for okay on the standing up on the left side. Christian, like whenever you guys pulled within seven, what was going through your minds? You guys were pretty pumped up. Just trying to make a comeback. I mean, uh, we dug ourselves in a big hole. We were just trying to turn the game around. Okay, if there are no other questions, we're we'll dismiss our student athletes and at this time entertain questions for head coach. Question on the left side aisle. I guess same question to you, Coach. They don't even make six threes a game. They make 11. Were you guys focusing on collapsing in, or was it just a matter of them making shots? What was the game plan? I wouldn't say collapsing in, but uh, coming into the game, uh, we felt like their strength was in the paint. Uh, Oturu and, and Jordan Murphy uh, are metal eaters. They do a terrific job of creating contact. And, scoring around the basket and um, that was a big challenge for our team and you know obviously Coucher shoots the ball extremely well we knew that coming in um, but you know the, the nine games or so that I watched on tape I think Jordan Murphy made one and uh, for him to make two in a game you know hats off to a terrific player you know guys uh, good players rise in those rise to the occasion in those type of situations and, and he did that and that's why they're moving on. But um, tough thing when, when you know their identity is built around the paint and they make some shots like they did today. But they earned the victory, and uh, we weren't quite good enough. Any final questions? Thank you very much, Coach. Louisville. Uh, Locker room will be open for another 20 minutes. Again, the press conference tomorrow, 135 for student athletes from Minnesota, 155 we have Coach Richard Patino. Press conferences will go from 135 through 435 tomorrow afternoon.